Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Giluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. It's always a privilege and an honor. And thank you for taking your precious time out to be with us uh, on this program. Um, as always, we try to bring impactful, life-changing business information for your own edification and enrichment. And I have a wonderful guest for you. I'm about to introduce her, or she'll introduce herself momentarily. But before we go to the guest, can I just ask one tiny little favor? Please strike that subscribe button. We need your support, guys. We really, really, absolutely need your support. And without you, we are nothing. Um, on that note, welcome to the studio, madam. Thank you for having me, Mr. Mokowe. Okay. Uh, would you have the pleasure of introducing yourself to our viewers in terms of who you are and sharing a little bit about your background? Awesome. So, Nono for Jesse is my name. I am, I am a spark of fire. Mm. I am a ray of sunshine mm. yes i warm people's hearts you know mm. um so nono for jesse is a human capital consultant an image consultant and mm. a personal branding consultant mm -hmm. and these all cut across today we are going to be focusing on the image and personal branding consultant aspect, yeah. aspect. Mm. so i am the managing consultant of and hesse consultancy as well as adwin center so, so, so those names again and hesse consultancy that's the human capital consultancy and adwin center which is the image and personal branding consultancy mm -hmm. so today our main focus is on the image and personal branding aspect okay yes just uh, t give us a condensed cv of how you wound up here in terms of training, background, and you know how you started this company, how you ended up with a, with a company like this. Yeah. Mm. All right. So my educational background is in business administration, majoring in human resources. Mm. I went to school to actually pursue biz international business because mm. I've always loved to travel, wanted to explore the world, and so forth. Mm. But then I realized that I wasn't gelling with people, or rather, I was stepping on people's toes quite a bit and I was like I need to learn how to, I need to learn people so that's what um, then I took the detour into human resources that's when I started human resources and it led me to becoming a human capital consultant then I've in my career as a human capital consultant I've been an officer a consultant senior consultant director um, human capital um, and that led me to eventually beginning my, my career as a managing consultant in my own um, establishment. I also possess um, MBA and I am a John Maxwell certified coach as well. MBA? Um, a generic MBA, an yeah. executive MBA from Open, but on Open University. Oh, great yes. stuff. So. And then uh, the John Maxwell aspect? So I became a John Maxwell certified trainer. That was 2019. Okay. Yes. It's very interesting. Yes. I'm interested in that trigger. What, what really caused you to realize, hey, look, I need to work on my emotional intelligence here. I'm not getting along with people nicely. What had happened? Can you give an example? So what had happened was that university, that is like the first time where you get to work in groups with people that's when you get to learn people you know that this one is able to pull the weight if they are required to pull the weight and then you have slackers and then so my issue was with the slackers mm. because if i want work done 
Mm. I expect work to be done. I expect everyone to carry that weight. Mm. So a backdrop to that was this. Prior to going to university, in junior school and senior school, I used to play. So I never, I wasn't taking education seriously. So I had a moment where, of realization that I realized that I nearly did not go to university because my points were not mm. at a certain level. Yeah. So when I got to university, I was like, no one is going to, I'm not going to play with this chance because for me, that was like a second chance. Mm. So I, I was like, you know what? Very I am focused. taking this opportunity and I am going to hold it by the horns. Mm. You know, so for me, that was my, my turnaround in terms of looking at education as an opportunity giver, as an option giver, you mm -hmm. know, to life in order for one to be able to make something out of themselves because I come from a small village, Lesoma, mm -hmm. and hey, not being educated and going, you know, and staying in that environment for me wasn't something that I was looking forward to. I saw myself there, mm -hmm. you know, as I told you, I went to school to do international business, so I saw myself as a global trotter. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if I don't get this opportunity to go to school and be educated, mm -hmm. I may actually be. Um, you know, stifling my 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 ambitions. Yeah, yeah. So now back to what then I realized. I realized that now because I was taking my schoolwork seriously, points mattered. You know, so in group assignments and so forth, because you are must as a whole, not as individuals. Mm. So I couldn't fail because of another person. That was non -nego uh, non negotiable. Mm. So that's when I realized more of myself, mm. the kind of person that I am, mm. you know, in terms of, okay, fine, if you're not going to do, th I don't watch my words sometimes. So how did you handle those slackers when you discover that someone was a slacker and they are jeopardizing your career, so to speak? So the thing about it is this is when I, 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 I got to find out that sometimes you need to talk to people, need to make under people understand instead of being angry mm -hmm. at people and so forth. So I realized that I was not that much sympathetic nor empathetic. Mm -hmm. You see, so for me, my anger will have the best of me because I would say, no, you know what, do this, what of you, yeah. Mm. So it was to tell people to do what it is that they knew. So you did it get into, you into trouble? Do. Confronting, did you have to confront people? Yes, and I don't mind confronting people. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's just the so way you, you find did it. it's the, the approach. Mm -hmm. Approach is everything when dealing with people because at the end of the day, you cannot do without people. Mm. Yeah. So that's what I learned. And then I remember actually going to a certain teacher and saying, I want to do group work alone. That wasn't even negotiable. Mm. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so I had to learn to work with people to achieve common goals. Mm -hmm. That's when I realized that. In as much as we are different, because that's when I had the realization that as people, we are different. Mm -hmm. That people who are ambitious, that people who are driven, that people who are just okay with just being okay. Yeah. You yeah. know, and not, yeah. They are so, okay with mediocrity. Me okay <laughs> with mediocrity, and I dislike mediocrity with a passion. Mm. Same, same. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I loathe it. What is image management? So image management, I love that. Mm. Image management is the art and the science of self-perception, the ability to recognize how one functions and operates that then leads to one being able to function in a way that they're able to fulfill that life's vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it talks to one having an appreciation of that concept of themselves, the idea of who is Nono for mm -hmm. and what is her life all about? So as you remember when we began, I said, I liken image management to um, business management as to what business management is for a business. Mm -hmm. Because as a person, we have different components of our lives. In order for a business, I'll just give this analogy so that it's easier to digest. Mm. In order for a business to thrive and to work, 
there are different aspects of a business. We have okay. operations, we have marketing, we have finance, we have your procurement, logistics, everything. Well, it varies, it varies depending on the business. So as a person, you have all these. So all these things need to work together in order for the business to be able to achieve its mandate. Mm -hmm. What is its mandate? We call that the vision and the mission of the business. Mm -hmm. And then there are goals that help us to achieve that mission and that vision, you know, and we break it down further and so forth. So similarly to a person, to an individual, we have different aspects of ourselves, you know, our lives. You, you have operations. How do you get by? on a daily basis are you able to put yourself together show up as you need to mm -hmm. you know and showing up is not only about how you dress because that is the tip of the iceberg yeah, yeah. so then you find that we are then faced with being able to run ourselves in an efficient manner so that we are able to accomplish whatever it is that sets our hearts on fire. Mm. Now the responsibility is yours to find what that is. Because what I've discovered is that a lot of people are on autopilot. People are going on with life as is usual. It, is it a skill? Is it an art? Is it a science? This image management. So that's why I said it is an art and a science because it's both. Mm -hmm. You need to use intuition and logic mm -hmm. in order to make this work. Mm -hmm. Because as a human being, when we talk about the science aspect of it, is that you're able to evaluate, you're able to analyze yourself, you're able to see, am I making progress? Is mm -hmm. that it's measurable? Mm -hmm. And then when we talk about intuition, there are certain things that you can't put a finger on them, mm. you know, but you know it when in your knowing. Mm. Yeah. So you find that, that those are the softer things that now, those things, depending on the exposure that you have had as a person, some people get it quicker or easier than others. So other people have to actually learn it. And that's why we are there as coaches in this area. Mm. Well, in, the, in the context of entrepreneurs, mm. or more generally in the context of BW and Southern Africa, mm. what, why is it relevant? Why is it important? So this is relevant. It's, it's important because I've realized that a lot of people don't actually know themselves. Like know themselves. So They don't self-introspect. They don't uh, study themselves. Something of that sort, mm -hmm. yes. So because what happens is that this is a process. All of us are on a process of self-discovery, uh, self-exploration and so forth. So you find that sometimes we are on this journey, but we're not mindful mm. of the journey in ourselves. Mm. So when you talk about an entrepreneur, for instance, you talk to a person who has set out to offer solutions to solve humankind problems, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm. So you find that sometimes as entrepreneurs, sometimes we are even starting these businesses out of, from rather a mindset of lack mm -hmm. because I am doing this business to provide a livelihood mm -hmm. for myself. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that that is an enterprise that is actually built on situations that can transform human life to another degree. Mm -hmm. You get. Mm -hmm. So there's a difference okay. between that. So when you know yourself, you actually know how you're fashioned and what you were fashioned to do. An mm. iPhone cannot do what, uh, you know, what a Ferrari does and yeah. so forth. Yeah. So some entrepreneurs are looking at you and they want to be you and they are different from you mm. and they're going to malfunction. Yes. Remember we spoke about image management being how you function and how you operate. It did. So a lot of people right now are incongruent with what it is that they're supposed to be doing. Mm. And mm. that's why sometimes we are not growing in our enterprises. Okay, let, let me just have an idea of this in terms of mm. your typical client. Mm. Maybe we could even take one success story, uh, a before and after situation. A person comes with X, Y, Z number of problems. Mm -hmm. They go through your processes and they come out with A, B, C. I want you to take us through that. Awesome. Mm. So I use this framework, I call it the, the image um, framework, where we look at the inner life of a person. We do the inner work, the outer work, and we also now look at the vocation, which could be your work or business. So when we look at your inner work, most of the time when my clients come to me, it's 
I, there's issues of unfulfillment, there's issues of feeling stuck or lack of clarity, lack of sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. So you find that with image management, I take people through a process of them learning themselves. Mm -hmm. As I said sometimes that people go through life on autopilot. What does that mean? I go to school, I, you follow the ritual. Mm -hmm. you know, you're not engaging with life and life needs to be engaged with. So when my clients come to me, we start looking at them. We start looking at that. What have been your beliefs about yourself? Because it order what runs your life is your life's philosophy. So we have and we take them through a process where they get to have an appreciation of that. Mm. So it's rigorous questions, strategic questions that help a person dig deeper mm -hmm. to understand what is it that makes me me mm. you know so we then look at it's a journey of self-discovery it is mm. you know and every journey really is part and parcel of that mm. but it differs in terms of the actual actualities and yeah mm. so now then we talk to what beliefs have actually solidified that philosophy mm. so then we look at are those beliefs actually helping you or working against you mm -hmm. and then we go on to now and also in terms of the attitudes that you carry mm. because that's your perspective towards life the outlook mm. and so forth so and then we delve deeper into one's convictions mm. one's customs you know which also now talk to one's values mm -hmm. the personal values and the disposition and emotional intelligence that's the inner work mm. what then one of my clients after us doing this this lady was so clear in terms of what she actually wanted to do or what her life stood for in terms of what it is that she was to express with the life that she that she has been given mm. what i often tell people when i describe myself and what i found that i've been fashioned for I'm an empowerer, I'm an uplifter, I'm an inspirer. Mm -hmm. Everything that I do in life revolves around those things. And there are more mm. of things. So, but they take different form and different shape, mm. you know. So with that skill set or with those qualities of mine, coaching works for me because it, push, it pushes my agenda, mm -hmm. life's agenda. Yes. Being a human capital consultant pushes that agenda. So I know how to be aligned. So mm -hmm. I've helped my, uh, my clients to actually find alignment. Mm -hmm. Now she's able to even thrive in business now because as a result of mm -hmm. the process, the work that we have done. Because mm -hmm. now she's clear what it is that she's all about and what she stands for, what ignites her. As mm. I started, I said, I'm a spark of fire. Mm -hmm. I'm a ray of sunshine. Yes. And that is what I do. I bring warmth mm. to people's mm. lives, you know, and I help mm. them dominate in that. So in the life. case of this woman, mm. she was totally different after the process. Totally, mm. totally. And after we actually finished that program, she enrolled in another program. Mm. So just to say how good mm. the service is. Okay. Yes. All right. And how Who needs it the most? Who needs image management the most? Everyone. Specifically, I would say teenagers. Some Anyone who's starting to be a teenager, because now teenagehood, uh, I'll just break it down. So, yeah. A teenager because that's when you are starting to have an understanding of oneself mm. and it, it, it needs hand holding to a certain degree to navigate that stage because you are forming a concept of yourself and we have parents sometimes to do that and other adults in the community but sometimes you find that other people lack such mm. and people then don't know how to actually go about life. So other people would actually go, um, would not have the support that they need. And then we also have in everyone now from that spectrum of teenagehood to everyone in between. Because if you want to thrive in life, not only you know going through life, as I always say, that we have been made to enjoy life, not to endure life. Mm -hmm. And I meet with a lot of people who are enduring life, Mr. Mokoko. Well, make a distinction, simplify it for us. What's the difference? Enduring life is taking what life throws at you and accepting it. You know, the thing about, as they always say that, 
when life may throw lemons at mm. you, other people sit in that lemonade or that lemon juice rather. Mm. Yeah. But when you are going to enjoy life now, you choose to spice it up with sugar and mm. you make your own lemonade mm. and you go along knowing that life is life. It's going to, you know, pan out as life. Mm. So you then, by studying and learning yourself and understanding all these things, mm. you're able to find alignment and congruence. Mm. You know, so that then leads to, because this is where I also then discovered this, that sometimes other people, because of not knowing themselves, they are in careers that do not play to their strengths. Mm -hmm. They are in businesses that are that are not using mm. skill sets that come naturally mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. So when you understand yourself from that image, and then the other thing that I just missed to explain is that image management also talks to vision. It also talks to the picture, the idea that you have of yourself. Mm. So when you have that and it's clear, mm -hmm. because our conversation, our coaching conversations help you gain that clarity. Yeah. Mm. So you find that you are able to be clear and you align yourself. You get to know what, are, oh, okay, fine. No, no, for uh, just example. For example, mm -hmm. one of the things that I learned about myself was that I'm naturally not a good listener. So I tried for the longest time to cultivate that. And Are you cutting into people when they're talking? I do that a lot. <laughs> you know, it's something that, and as much as I made, but I'm good at other things, you know. So then I realized that sometimes society teaches us to focus on what is not working for you. On your weaknesses. On your weaknesses, rather. But I then looked at it and I was like, wait a minute, I can actually focus on the things that I'm naturally good at because when I focus on them, I don't just get a multiple of increase, but I grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. Instead of me trying, you know, and dwelling on my weaknesses, because you can only mitigate your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. You cannot turn them into positives strengths. or strengths. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand that. Is that what you ability. believe? Okay. That's what I 100% believe. Mm -hmm. You cannot change your weaknesses. You're going to have them until you die. Mm -hmm. You can mitigate them, but you can never get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So the best thing is for you to strengthen what you're able to strengthen. Mm -hmm. What is that? Mm -hmm. Your strength. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So I realized that, okay, fine, I'll live listening to the listeners. Mm -hmm. And because I'm a runner, I'm a doer, I'm a driver, that's what I focus on. Mm -hmm. I challenge. Hence why coaching works works well for me and consultancy wow wow this is so beautiful um no why do you think it's important using your your you yourself as a case study mm. for someone to achieve fulfillment and satisfaction and in what way have you achieved that awesome mm. fulfillment satisfaction it's everything i mean when you look at distress diseases Sometimes it's a dis-ease mm. of something in one's life. Mm. Remember in one's life. Remember we talked about incongruence. Sometimes we are in that state because things are not aligned. So mm. sometimes one is in that situation because of the lack of self-knowledge. Because I often use this, um, the steps to help people in that process. It's a self-discovery journey. You need to become self-aware. Being self-aware, you gain insights, knowledge about oneself, and look at you and look at yourself non-judgmentally, looking at, oh, okay, fine, this is what I'm good at, or these are my strengths, these are my traits, these are my qualities, these are my characteristics. And then from that knowledge, you need to understand it. Knowledge in itself is a surface level Thingy. Mm. You need to go on to the to next apply. stage to not even applying. Mm. You need to understand that mm. as it relates to oneself. Mm -hmm. Yes, because then you need to be able to comprehend it. Or how does that work yeah. in relation to me? Yeah, just so, so then, let's apply it to you so that we, we grasp mm -hmm. the concept. Yeah, so <clears throat> I got to know myself, isn't it, in terms of me discovering mm. how I relate with just They're my not environment. Listening and so on. Mm. Pardon? Not listening and so on. Yes. Mm. Mm. And being frank mm. as a person who speaks mm. and so forth. And I realized that that does not necessarily work well with other people. Mm. So then I realized that 
okay, so I needed to understand how does that, what's causing that. I then realized that, oh, as people, we are different. Mm -hmm. So as people, there are people who mind confrontation, those who don't like confrontation, those who don't, you know, um, who receive, who are receptive to that. And then I then learned about how I prefer people telling me if they don't like something mm. so that I'm able to improve and to, mm. to, to, to make changes. Mm. And then from then, then one is able to, from self-knowledge, I was able to then know what, oh, in order for me to build relationships with other people, mm. I have to go beyond just knowing myself. I need to understand them mm. as well. So that's when then I learned what, oh, Okay, so as I work with people, approach is important. How do I talk to people? Do I listen to them? Or, oh, okay, fine, another person didn't do this. Maybe there were other factors beyond them not wanting to actually do something. Mm. And then from that, that informed me. Is it called me. being empathetic? Or? That's being empathetic because, mm. yes, to, 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 not necessarily. That's sympathy because yeah, yeah. I am relating with you. Empathy, uh, empathy is when I'm able to put myself in your shoes. Yes. Because that was something that I had a difficulty with. I didn't know that I needed to put myself in people's shoes. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know. So mm -hmm. that is something that then I learned because of those experiences. Now I'm much better. I'm growing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not yet there, mm. but I'm growing. So then what then that helped me was then come to self-management because now I had that knowledge and I was able to comprehend it. The other thing that was a fact, I'm, I was an only child for the longest time. Oh. So that had a thing because, well, you, you know... You're not a spoiled brat. I no, I wasn't <laughs> one. So, you know, but, so you but, find... But, but there are some certain dynamics that come yes, with that being an, 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 an only child. Exactly. Mm. So you find that now, you know, when people make mistakes, you're not as quick to you know to, 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 to relate mm. with and so forth mm. so that then helped me with self-management to say oh okay fine no it's not everyone who's trying to bank assignments and so forth mm. and for me to try to then relate with mm. people mm. and you know so then that then led to the last stage which now is self-leadership to be able to even if I don't like something I just don't pounce on people thinking you know so that has helped me to actually build relationships now if and, you know, um, friend at friend level, friendship rather level, mm -hmm. at business and so yeah. forth. Because uh, friendships or relationships are the currency of business mm. and life. Okay. So, yeah. You are uh, John Maxwell certified. Tell us about that process and what that has brought to the table in terms of your business. Awesome. So the John Maxwell certification really is about helping people transform transformational journey, helping people go along that transformational journey of personal development. And at the end of the day, one thing I've found is that we know so, as people, we can only know so much. And sometimes you need an objective view of a third or a second party rather mm. to be able to help you as a sounding board. So sometimes you hit a snag, you hit a wall, and you don't understand where it's coming from. So when you are sharing your own story, so it has helped me with coaching skills rather, where I'm able to now, as I speak with people, evaluate their situations and so forth, I have the, the ear now to be able to hear in between the lines what could be the underlying the subtleties you know the subtleties and so forth and be able to direct and just with the skill of questioning as well and we are able to get to the core of what could be the potential issues of individuals so that has helped me a great deal in business because now i'm actually um, able to reach out to people who to a large degree, have not been achieving the, the kind of success mm. or, you know, the, 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 that desired um, traction in okay. their lives and in their, in their areas of work or business. So with um, the, the knowledge that I've gained from the pro, Is it mainly program, leadership? I, I would say it's a holistic program. It's not only leadership. Mm -hmm. Because 
also, I, I feel like when we're talking about leadership, also it's about leading other people. Mm. Where that's why I was talking about self-leadership in this instance, because mm. I believe that we have not been called necessarily to lead other people per se. We are supposed to lead in our area of giftedness. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to, giftedness, in, it, it takes many forms. I'm gifted in the area that I'm operating in right now. You know, um, I often tell other people, you know, people in certain platforms that I am beauty. Beauty, not mm. this, but everything. That's as, true. Yes, that too. Um, I, don't, I don't usually like because that I, I have a, a story to tell about that as well because sometimes um, beautiful girls have the issue of pretty privilege. We are, people think we are making it because of the beauty. And sometimes we are seen as blondes as well. And that has rubbed me the wrong way for many years. And I came to a place that I don't need to prove to anyone that I'm smart. Mm. I am smart. I know that. Yeah. And it's settled. Yeah. So, I hear you. Yes. So um, where was I? No, you were, you're, you're, you're explaining how the John Maxwell leadership yes. program assisted you. Awesome. So I was talking about self-leadership. Mm. So it's being able to lead and direct mm. yourself your mm. own life mm. because then what you're able to do for yourself inevitably it will spill over mm. and people and then the other thing I love about what what leadership true leadership is which is influence mm. you do not force a person to to you know or dictate to a person to lead to to follow you or something of like that mm. which is what is happening because out of fear mm -hmm. that's when people are actually thinking that they're leading but not necessarily mm -hmm. so you find that when you're able to lead oneself you are able to inspire mm -hmm. without even you know mm. yeah instilling now in working you. in this market um would you say that people like yourselves are beginning to have a significant impact and why do you say that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Because right now people, right now people are, are, are becoming alive to the fact that there's more to life than just having a qualification and being able to secure a job. But they're understanding that they are actually, because people are, are concerned about securing the job or securing the bag. I tell people that you have a bag. Mm. Secure you. Mm. Because the more you know you, you know how to actually express yourself or, you know, how to actually reflect whatever it is that you stand for. And as I said, it can take form in many shapes and, you know, in many ways. Mm. So that way, I don't believe this is actually a cure. I believe it's a cure to mm. your issues of unemployment and so forth. In, in, in. Because when you know yourself. So you, let me get it straight. You're mm -hmm. saying. Personal development is a cure to image issues of management. unemployment and image management. Yes. Is a cure to? One of the things that it's a cure to, mm. unemployment. Mm -hmm. Because I tell people that I can never go out of a job because there's always something that I can offer of value. Because the way I'm fashioned, I am a solution or rather, I carry knowledge and insights that can help another person. Mm -hmm. As I always say, I give this analogy that trees produce fruit. Do the trees eat the, the fruit? Mm, no. no. They benefit other people. Mm. Similarly. You're like a tree. Yes. Mm. So the things that you produce, you need to discover what it is mm. that you, you are able, what you have been fashioned to do. Mm. And then hone it, mm. refine it, mm -hmm. until it is able to benefit another person. You say you are the bag. I, I developed that concept a bit more for me because I like mm. it. You are the bag. Yeah, I share that similar sentiment. Mm. I am the bag. Mm. You are the bag. You are the package. You are the package. And then that's the beauty about image management. The other aspect of it, that now how you position yourself, how you package yourself, how you present yourself, mm. so that people are able to relate with what you are offering. Okay. Yeah. How do you incorporate these concepts into one's daily life? How do you actually live these concepts that you're expressing, um, mm. image management-wise, and in terms of actual application? Yeah. So when we look at, as I had shared earlier, about the, I'll just run through them quickly, the image framework. Having an understanding of your attitude, 
your beliefs, your convictions, and your customs. Very imp um, your disposition and your emotions, your mm. emotional intelligence. Very important to understand that what you see right now on the outside and how you know we go through life and so forth is usually an expression, a reflection of what we hold inside. So when you understand that, because that will be what drives you. So if you're not achieving the results or you're, you're not seeing what it is that you have envisaged for yourself, mm -hmm. that could mean now digging deeper to understand what kind of attitudes am I holding that may be holding me back? What kind of beliefs am I, am I holding that may be holding me back? And so forth. Are your values actually clear to you? Because what you value, you need to then educate the second party because... If people don't know what you stand for, there's no how that they'll respect that. And other people feel disrespected because they're not communicating. Those other people are stepping on their boundaries and so forth. In, in. And then, so you understand that and then that helps you in terms of how you navigate life. You know the things that you ought to be focusing on, things that actually need your focus, your attention, your priority, and from a, also a values perspective, I get because that is what is important to you. Other people don't know what is important to them. Mm -hmm. And then, because you need to get to the granular mm. level. And then when we talk about the outer granular image... Granular cellular level. Cellular level. Mm. So when we talk about the, um, the outer, we talk about your appearance, we talk about your behavior. We talk about also the other things, actions. We mm. talk about communication, both verbal and nonverbal. Then we talk about your demeanor as well. We talk about etiquette. How do you go about showing up? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you show up? I know I'm talking about when I have this person is serious about themselves and about their life. Not serious that you have a, a demeanor. Yes, it is. Mm. No, that you 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 know when a person has a sense of themselves and they carry themselves in a certain way. Mm. You you will see it in the way they carry themselves. They're focused. You know. Yeah. And they know what they're about. They know what they're about and they are clear even in their communication of that. Mm -hmm. one and then when we talk about then the vocation and so forth, what what are your aspirations? Are you clear on that? What are your assumptions that you may be holding about life that may be holding working mm. or working against you or for you? Mm. What are your your business acumen. Some people are in businesses they don't know even they don't even know, you know, what that industry, what that whole thing is all about. Wow, and, and people are blaming customers for not <laughs> anyway. So business acumen, very important, both mm. as an employer as a as a, a business person and as an employee, because you need to understand the the, the, the organization, the industry that it, it works in, operates in as an employee as well. And then and see, you need to understand your capabilities, your competence as an individual. You know, and then D, we talk about just your presence, your digital footprint. Is it representing you accordingly? And then um, for E, we talk about um, emotional intelligence as well. As you deal in at a professional level in business, mm. dealing and working with people, very important. But most importantly as well, dealing and working with yourself. Mm. Because mm. sometimes mm. the way we deal and we handle ourselves overspills to the relationships that we have with our, with our colleagues or mm. other people. Yeah. Typically, what, what are the stumbling blocks? Why are people re not realizing their desired goals in your experience? What, what are the stumbling blocks? <clears throat> it takes work. Most people are not willing to do the work. It, it is painful. It is a painful pro pro process sometimes to come to the realization that you may actually be the one who is actually stopping yourself from actually leaving out the life that you have envisaged. Because sometimes that may be dealing with habits that are... It's difficult to accept you are your own worst enemy sometimes. Sometimes, yes, it mm. is. And also sometimes lack of knowledge, proper knowledge, you know, in terms of an exposure sometimes because other people think the way their lives is, is that's how it's supposed to be. I look at other people who are making it, I'm like, uh-uh, what they have, not necessarily the success that they have, but I'm like... There's I'm, more. They're, they're God's creation, I'm God's creation as well. Mm. So I ought to thrive and you know so that's what actually happened to mm. me i was like uh -uh, there's more to this it's so, like it's your birthright 
to it thrive. is mm. it is i mm. definitely believe so because mm. that's what i I'm believe that too yes mm. so then um I, w- I was just sharing about um so that's the the, the other thing that mm. just having that understanding and how to then maneuver as you go through life because life is going to throw things at you so mm. you then need to know am i a so the inability person? to realize mm-hmm. that you are the cause mm. of your problems um coupled with your lack of preparedness to address that mm. isn't that the biggest stumbling block it is it is because that then is a lead as to how far then you are able to go then how do you overcome it as a coach how do you get through that 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 fog so to speak so the fog as i said with <clears throat> coaching work you do inner work as you said sometimes that reflective um exercises in there as well but also difficult conversations that need to be had with the person and one's ability or rather willingness to say take responsibility rather of where they are at accept that they are part and parcel of the current predicament and to say okay fine in order for things to change different things need to be uh, to be done mm. so different input will then result to different output so okay so so um that's why i go back to my earlier question mm. in this community uh, at an individual level and at a corporate level mm. how successful are we i would <coughs> say there's uh, there's actually a, a man i think you once interviewed who was measuring happiness is it uh, imp- yeah is mr kamenya yes yes, yes. and there's a nation that we are the top we were the bottom 3 or 4 unhappiest people in the, the world that's where it is so a lot of people are in that state um for me that is why i find that there's a greatest need for me to do the work that i'm doing because the more i educate people because people do need to gain an awareness of the services and so forth and the more you are able to um break down that barrier because some people actually think that they can actually do it by themselves one of the things that um I've actually been getting from some of my clients is that that hey I've been going around in circles and I thought that I could do this by myself until I came to the play is it okay let me stop lying to myself because I'm still in it and I've been saying this mm. how far have I gone with well, this why do so, why do top businessmen yeah. need coaches and why do tennis players top tennis players need coaches and biz- uh, sports people because we have blind spots that sometimes we cannot see as sotswana say and says mapudi ga ipone sa na go dire a mapudi ga ipone se se motho go so a coach helps Which directly you. translated means that you don't basically see what's you don't head. see what's on your head yeah. that's a literal um, translation, translation. But, you know, yeah. but yes as mm. it says that sometimes there are things that are hindering us that we may not potentially not see mm. so a coach helps you by listening to you and seeing your common threads your patterns and so forth and they're able to pinpoint out mm, have you ever actually considered this have you actually looked at this you know a different perspective can mm. shed light mm-hmm. and just an objective view as to maybe the the, the cause of your predicament can mm. actually help also just um thrust you forward and propel you forward mm. yeah and um i asked about the corporate uh corporate level are you mm. doing any interaction with corporates and what impact if any are you beginning to have in your organization awesome so i am not yet target i've been working solely with a lot of individuals and um solo preneurs mm-hmm. so corporate is my next step mm. what i see this program or this my services helping in corporate is we have what is now called quiet quitting mm-hmm. when a person who does not understand themselves gets to a place where they are fed up with whatever situation is or what of you they may result to not giving their all whatever in their jobs and so forth thinking that the employer is the one that's going to suffer unfortunately it backfires because it is you who when you do not grow 
you're not stagnating. You're actually regressing. I agree with that. You know, so that is one of the issues that I am certain that my services will solve in corporations because right now the rate of dissatisfaction in organization or in, with employment is mm -hmm. very high and it's affecting engagement levels in organizations. Mm -hmm. So as Botswana, one of the things that we are ranking high on is our inability to, to, to be productive. Mm -hmm. So that is adversely affecting us. So even the as entrepreneur, an as an economy and everyone else, mm. you know, because right now we are, we're not able to attract foreign direct investment and we need that. Mm. We need that. So that's why I was saying this is actually a solution, one mm. of the solutions to actually to unemployment. So the mm. more we help people. Tell me about this concept of people just turning up and not, not doing anything, just being present at work. They're not even present. The, the, I mean, physically okay, the, present. The physically present. Yes. Tell me how, how what's that? Explain that phenomenon and how mm. how corporates can detect it and, and, and deal with it. Quite quick, and you'll see it. Mm. <laughs> so people are just given the bare minimum. Mm. People are given the bare minimum. People are not going um, as we often would encourage people to go above and beyond. People are saying that they are working for the, the, the paycheck, something of that. So to, mm. to merge that work input with mm. what it is that they're getting. When they can, output could be here, they say, no, but the paycheck is here, so I'll go so down. So I'll just be here. Go down. Yeah. Mm. But then I say... But then they limit the ability to grow that paycheck. Exactly. The paycheck will not grow if you are, if you are lowering If it. you are lowering, yeah, because mm. at the end of the day, what work does or workplaces, what workplaces, they are an opportunity for you to continue growing your potential. Mm -hmm. Because all of us are always at a state where we are always unleashing potential. Mm. You know, you do this, it shows you how far you can go as an individual. The next thing, we didn't start off as supervisors, we didn't start off as managers, mm. but because we had been working and showing our ability, that was what showed that our, I had what it took to be mm -hmm. able to operate at this level. So mm -hmm. when you are quiet quitting, you're actually just deciding to sit on yourself, sit on your potential, and eventually you will just work yourself out of the system, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. Okay. So organizations are able to detect such kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, but just even seeing the demeanor of employees, you will see a person who is not even interested, you know, who's not engaged, who has no, yeah. And the proper thing is to send that person to you or to fire them? The proper thing is definitely to send that person to me because firing is not, <laughs> it's, it, it's not, it's not the solution mm. because at the end of the day, it is more costly also mm. for you as a business person to be hiring and firing. Okay. You know. Now here's your chance to be shameless and plug your services. What can you do precisely? What, what precisely are the services that can help these people and catapult them to a better future? Awesome stuff. So I offer a wide array of services, but I'll just talk about a few. So I offer, um, so Ado and Sinto is the name of my business, mm -hmm. and it is an image and personal branding consultancy. We mm -hmm. offer image management services. One, yes. We offer personal branding, mm -hmm. and um, we offer also image um, management. Sorry, image management, I've mentioned that. Mm. So we offer um, body analysis, color analysis, um, facial analysis, all of those things. And we also do training for corporates. We do workshops. We do but, but, um, yeah, you... speaking engagements on those subjects. Mm -hmm. And how does one reach us? Um, do I go there or no? Do I I'll, I'll, I'll give you a chance oh, to, okay. to give us your contacts at the end. Okay. Um, what I'm interested in is when you mentioned uh, about um, body, you said body what? Imaging? Analysis. B analysis. <laughs> what is yes. that about? Okay. So, body analysis is having an appreciation of your body, your silhouette, and being able to know how to best um, package it so that it represents what it is that you stand for, 
remember the congruence of what it is that you have envisaged for yourself. Mm -hmm. You could probably say you see the kind of business that I operate in by the way I carry or uh, have put myself together mm -hmm. and so forth. So that is very important to ensure alignment with what it is that you do mm -hmm. and what it is, uh, you know, the values as well that you carry. So um, that's the, 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 the body analysis now. We... we, we, we help you dress appropriately for what it is that you want to go for and what it is that you want to represent, mm. in short. Okay. Yeah. And then you said face? Yes. What's that? So we have different faces and we need to... I tell people that you don't... You, your aim with how you put yourself forward is to have an appeal mm. and attraction, not essential because other people think of it that way. Mm. People work with people they know, like, that likability thing has to be there. Mm. So sometimes other people are just put off by, the you know, appearance. the appearance. And it's sad because at the end of the day, we are visual creatures. So you need to make yourself work for you. Is that about grooming then? There is an element of grooming mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Yeah. Are there instances where you just advise someone to just get rid of their whole entire wardrobe and start afresh? If it's not working for you, then it has to go. You mm -hmm. have to let it go. And then because we have an upgrade, but sometimes I, we do it in phases because it's not everyone who can afford, you know, just to discard everything and get everything, you know. So you do it in, in levels as mm -hmm. well because there are some things that we can salvage. Mm -hmm. We can work with and incorporate um, other pieces and then make that and as you go along then you introduce new things until mm. you build an wardrobe that speaks to you that speaks but doesn't to the market also confuse because there was a time when it was very important to wear your three-piece suit when you go and meet your bank manager mm. but nowadays that's the worst thing you can do you don't have to really look fancy you have to look like you're really busy at work so um, mm. attitudes have shifted and what do you have to say about that? So, there's really... N Thank you for that question. The thing about it is this. In as much as societal attitudes may change, what is your own attitude? Is what you stand for going to be dictated by the env external environment. The thing about this is that we're always communicating. And that's the other thing that I often tell people, that clothing is a form of communication. So if another person doesn't take themselves seriously, that doesn't mean that I don't need to take myself seriously. So three-piece suit, if it's your thing, it is your thing at an individual. We're all individuals. So what's happening in popular culture doesn't necessarily need to... Um, rub off of me if it doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. So the thing about this is that we tailor and make your appearance or rather how you present yourself. How you portray yourself. How you portray yourself very unique to you and who you want to be known for. Mm -hmm. So because I'm not going to allow another person to dictate how I show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what a popular culture is saying, this is out, that's them, fine with them, but this is how I'm going to show up. Mm. I prefer being polished. If you have a problem with that and you prefer being sloppy, that's on you. Mm. I am not going to mm. do that. Mm. Yeah. And you're not going to dictate to your clients how they should do it. No, I don't dictate to my clients because that is the recipe for disaster. I help you unleash your own uniqueness mm -hmm. and what works for you. Mm -hmm. because that is where the secret source is, because you'll be able to even maintain that, okay. because that is what is also important. I can tell you, do this, sit like this, what if, if it's not you, if it's not how you are fashioned, you're going to revert. Mm. You know? And sometimes even putting in the work and the effort, you might not even. Mm. Mm. Know about. Yeah. So. All right. Um, let's talk about brand Nono, uh, Nono for Jesse down the line. Mm. What do you envisage uh, 10 years, 15 years down the line what sort of entity can we, f can we imagine uh, or look forward to? Awesome. Great question. I see myself as a conglomerate mm. operating in a space that looks at the individual or people holistically. Mm -hmm. So 
my, my, my focus, my interest is in helping people thrive, as I said. Mm. Life is to be enjoyed, not to be endured. Mm. So I see myself operating the business. Uh, the businesses will be in the area of wellness, in the area of apparel, in the area of um, image and personal branding as I'm in, mm. in the, you know, in, in, in supporting businesses um, find an alignment mm. with the, the talent that they're bringing on board because not everyone in the streets mm -hmm. or in the market is for you. So it's very important to ensure that congruence. Mm. So that is the, those are the spaces that you know, for will be operating wow. in wellness as well. So that is the space. Wow. Do you yeah. see yourself? International. Mint, uh, yes. International. Okay, well, you, you, you jumped ahead of me there. Sorry. That's, that's, very, that's very good. All right. Yes. This is the, uh, the time when uh, you get to ask me a question, if you have one. If I have one. Mm. Awesome. Mr. Mkhobi. So, I would like to know this. You are a lawyer by profession. Mm -hmm. And you branched off into other things. When was the time on your journey that you decided, okay, this is now the time. I've solidified this, and now I feel like this is the time for me to then dabble into other things. Because sometimes I feel as upcoming entrepreneurs, we look at you and we're like, yo, he's done it, he's everywhere, he's in this and this mm -hmm. and this, and I can actually do go into these things and then I see that I'm overstretching myself <laughs> you know so I think that's my question to you when would you say one could start considering doing such you know mm. um, looking into other things so that that growth as well it's it's it's, it's sustainable it doesn't stretch yeah. them to a point where they're now in a panic zone yeah, yeah. I spent the first 12 years doing nothing but lawyering mm. And it was around the 12th year that I diversified when I had a particular challenge that I had to gra grapple with, uh, more particularly a, a, a career threatening a piece of litigation, which mm -hmm. I've talked about previously. Mm -hmm. So that got me to start looking. So it was a case of experiencing what I call a cataclysmic event, mm -hmm. which forced me to look elsewhere. And then when I looked closer into real estate, I got to love it. Mm -hmm. And then it was a matter of having a true, true track career where, you know, one morning I'm in court, afternoons I'm negotiating deals, and so on and so forth. So, <clears throat> so from about 2000 to around 2013, it was those two careers. Mm -hmm. So 12 years, pure law. Then the next uh, 10 years or so, it was law with real estate side by side. Then 2013, I left the law completely and <coughs> when I say completely, day-to-day -day lawyering. Mm -hmm. I still go to court when I have to, okay. when, I, when there's a particularly pressing matter. Okay. But uh, then diversified into, into other areas, even beyond real estate. So for me, it was gradual. It was a case of personal development, personal development, growth, growth. And then mm. it feeds, it's a process that feeds onto itself. Mm. And then it, it grows from there. I hope I've covered your question. You have. Mm. Because I think sometimes we overextend <clears throat> ourselves, mm. uh, especially ambitious, uh, as yeah. ambitious, <laughs> ambitious entrepreneurs. So I think that's yeah. something I've learned as well. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, that's your camera there. As we conclude our conversation, please share with the viewer all your contacts. Uh, but before you do, leave them, leave them with one powerful, inspiring, all-encompassing message. Thank you, Mr. Mohobe. <coughs> Dear viewer, remember this. You are the bag. So be busy in the business of securing you. How does securing you look like? Doing the necessary work to harness your God-given natural giftings. 
that could come as a result of the talents that you possess, the giftings that you possess. And sometimes for some people, it takes more work than others, but it is your responsibility to find out what that is. And the more you work on those, you refine them, the more you will find your sweet spot. And the world is nothing but your oyster. So flourish. All right, contact details. My contact details, so my email address is adoincento, A-D-D-O-I-N-C-I-T-O at njco.co.bw or nonofo at njco.co.bw. Again, nonofo at njco.co.bw or adoincento at njco.co.bw. Cell phone number, line, it's also on WhatsApp, 77134061. That is 77134061. And then follow me on um, Instagram at my handle is nono 4 Jesse. Facebook similar, Nuno for, or you can just search me as Nuno for Jesse. LinkedIn as well, Nuno for Jesse. And TikTok as well, Nuno for Jesse. Okay. So, awesome. Yeah, next time uh, you'll come and discuss your social media uh, activities and sure. images there. Yeah, sure. So, it's I a promise. Do, yeah? Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. I actually do um, styling videos for people, and the reception has been very great. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.